Let's say I'm an economist, and I'm curious about whether, in general, things are getting more expensive or not, and if they are getting expensive, by how much. So the way I'd approach that is I would think of, well, what are just a bunch of goods and services that the average person would buy? So I would, I would, think, up of, I would think up some type of basket of goods, goods, and services. And I would try to weight that basket based on how people actually spend their money. So I'd say, OK, 40% of people's money on average is spent on housing. Maybe another 10% is spent on transportation. Maybe another 10% is spent on food. And I would go out into the market, and I would see, I would try to take an average of what these things cost. And I would sample a bunch of products, a bunch of services, so I get a, a decent average of that. So this, was not a, this, is not a, this is not a simple thing to do, but I'm an economist, and I'm serious about trying to calculate that. And let's say that when I take that weighted average of all of this stuff, I just come up with a number. And this is, I'm not giving you the details of how it's actually calculated, but to give you the idea of what they're doing. So I get a number. So I just, you know, to rent a, uh, to, to, to buy or, or lease your average automobile, to lease your average apartment, to buy your average servings of food for, um, for a given family, all the rest. Let's say I come up with that costs and I'm making up a number here, let's say that it costs $20,000, my basket of goods and services, just based on the way that I've weighted it. And this is all happening in year one. So this is in year one, year one. Now, I'm curious whether between year one and, let's say, year five, and year five, whether things got more expensive. So I'll take that same basket of goods and services. So basket of goods and services. And I'll try to figure out what is their weighted average cost in year five. And this is a lot harder than it might sound right now, because the baskets of goods and services change. If computers get faster, do you use the same computer, or do you think about what the average computer is, which would now be a better computer? If most people's TVs got bigger, do you use the same TV in year one and year five, or do you adjust for what is now the average TV, which is now bigger? If houses have gotten bigger on average, do you use the same house, or do you use the average house? So there's a whole bunch bunch of areas here that you can really tweak. And these are actually huge subjects of debate uh, on, on what is the actual increase in cost. But let's say that you're able to do this in what you think is a pretty reasonable way. And you find that the same basket of goods adjusted for things like technology and all of the rest now costs, now costs $22,000. So your takeaway from here is the same things that cost $20,000, the things that gave you the same standard of living in year one, to get that same standard of living in year five, you now need to spend 10% more. It's gotten $2,000 more expensive off of $20,000. So it's gotten 10% more expensive. So you, as the economist, what you would say is, as the way you've defined it, your consumer price index. And this is abbreviated with CPI, consumer price index. Your consumer price index is up by, by 10%. Or another way, based on the way you measured it, and it changes from country to country, and even within countries, they change the way that they do these baskets, basket of goods. But by the way you've measured it, you would say that price inflation, price inflation has, or you would say that the price inflation has been has been 10% between year one and year five. Or in general, everything got 10% more expensive. Or you would need 10% more money to have the same standard of living. And in general, when people are just referring to inflation, so if you just see the word inflation being referred to, especially in modern times, they are referring to price inflation, this general increase in the price of goods and services measured by some type of basket of goods. There is another type of inflation, and that is monetary inflation. Monetary inflation, and they are related. Monetary inflation is inflation due purely to an increase of the money supply. So this is increase, increase in money supply. And in general, in general, if this increase in the money supply does outstrip kind of the productive capacity of the country, it could very well lead to price inflation. But in general, what, what people measure when they talk about inflation from one year to the next, they're talking about this basket of goods. They're talking about price inflation. The other thing that you'll sometimes see, maybe in year five, 
maybe in year five, someone says, hey, I could sell you this house. This house, so this is in year five. I could sell you a house. And this house in year five is is $660,000, is $660,000. And someone might ask, well, what, what would be that price if we adjusted it for inflation in year one dollars? So what they're saying is, if you adjust for how much how much value your money has lost, because if things are getting more expensive, that means each dollar is being worth less. You can buy less with each dollar. So when people say, how much is that adjusted for inflation in year one money, you're essentially saying, what amount of money would that house have had to cost in year one that when you adjust it for inflation, when you increase it by 10%, so that's the same thing. Increasing by 10% is the same thing as multiplying by 110% or multiplying by 1.1. So what amount of money would that house had to have cost in year one that if I multiply it by 1.1, I get $660,000? And we could do a little quick math here to figure that out. So if we say, let's say that, I don't know, let's call it P. P is the price of the house in year one. I'll call it P1. That times 1.1 times 1.1 is going to be equal to $660,000 when you factor in the 10% inflation over these years. Now this is simple algebra right here. You can divide both sides by 1.1. Divide both sides by 1.1, and we get, and we get these cancel out. You get the price. Of that house in year one, 66 divided by 11 would be 6. Now you could work it out with a calculator if you don't feel comfortable with what I'm about to do. But this would give you, this would give you $600,000 if you work this math right out here, and you could figure out the decimals. I and mean, what we could do, well, I think I think you get the, the general idea here. You can use your calculator. I kind of did this one in my head, but the general idea is a house in year one that is $600,000. $600,000, if you factor in the, the devaluing of the currency, or how much, how much more expensive everything got in year five would cost $660,000. So you might hear someone say, when they're talking about inflation or they're talking about price increases, this house in year five is $660,000, which is equal to, which is equal to $600,000, $600,000 in year, in year one. Year one money, and as an example of that, you know, I live in a neighborhood where the houses are uh, have gotten all of a sudden, you know, because I live in, in the heart of Silicon Valley. It's not a fancy neighborhood by any stretch of the imagination, but the houses now are quite expensive, and we have neighbors who moved in in the 50s, and they say, "My God, I bought the, our house for ten thousand dollars, and now people are selling these houses for so much more." And the reality is, is that it is true. The, the house has appreciated, but $10,000 in 1950 was actually a lot, a lot of money. Uh, uh, doctors and engineers did not make that much more than, than that much per year. I don't know the exact amount. So the reality is, is that you actually have to, you have to adjust money for the year that you're talking about, and you have to adjust it for inflation. So if you in, uh, believe this 10% inflation number, hopefully, uh, people's incomes also increased by the same amount. So the same person, maybe with the same skills and the same job, who could afford the house for $600,000 in year one, could now pay $660,000 for it, and it won't take a, an unusually large chunk of their, of their expenditure. It would take the same chunk that it did in year one. So hopefully that clarifies things a little bit, and, and I'll, in the future, do more videos going into the details of inflation.